Conjure community, the world's best magic club. And today we're going to look at Paul Potassi, a final look at Paul Potassi, really. Uh, do us a favor real quick, hit follow or subscribe so uh, you'll be notified when we go live with the new show. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing pretty good, man. Pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. You know, excited. We're grooving. Yeah. We're grooving along. We're going to talk about magic. Always. Always. You know, yeah. so, we have so much magic in our lives. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's a great escape, if nothing else. It's, a great it's wonderful. Escape. Yeah. So today we're going to continue uh, Paul Potassi. And really, this is the last of the Paul Potassi we're going to look at. Last of the show pieces, the real, uh, real big guns from him. Uh, and it's, it's all great magic. All the magic we've been looking at from him. It's all stuff that he's clearly performed hundreds, if not thousands of times. And everything's worked to the nth degree. And I think these routines reflect a lot of that. And uh, I think the more of the uh, lesser known items, they're not the real show items. So it's, uh, it's cool. Let's, um, let's take a mm -hmm. look at this and we'll, we'll talk about it on the other side. All right, let's do it. Excellent. Perfect. I have here a pad and a pencil. <laughs> yes. Magic is a good job. You can get close to the ladies. Just don't creep them out, man. Oh, yeah, he's, he's bordering on the 1970s <laughs> creeper. Oh, no. I always wondered, though, if I had an accent, if it would make my magic better. I wrote something down here. I have thought that before. A too. message. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, it might be serious. Uh, I know, I'm so afraid of <laughs> Where's my glass? Somewhere down here. We go to put this paper and the message in the glass. Now, I want you, please, to just pick a card. One. OK? Look at it. Show it only to this half of the room. This? Don't show it to that half. This half. <laughs> yes? I hope the camera has seen it. Put the card back. Shuffle. Frank, you have not seen the card. No. Madam, you have not seen the card. No. Fantastic. If you've seen it, it's also fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you will tell me, please, any number, let's say between uh, one and ten. Seven. Seven. Yes. Put your hand forward. You put the cards on here. Put your hand on top. What do you say, Frank? Do you like? Well, the cards are in the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like oh my. <laughs> Your card was a black card. Correct. Your card was clubs. Yes. Was it a female? <laughs> was it a female? No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> then it was a number. An even number. It was a ten of clubs. Correct? Yeah. You said seven. You said seven. Without that, was able to touch your hands. Card number seven will be her ten of clubs. Count. Count? Yes, you, one by one. Face up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, show. Whoa! And now I will prove to you I know everything in advance because before we started the trick, I wrote something down on this people's piece of paper and it says 10 of clubs. Thank you. Hmm. It's pretty good. He gets a lot out of a very simple, simple idea, right? I was going to say that is squeezing all the juice out of the lemon right there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's very, very old school technique to get there, to do all that stuff that he's doing. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's lovely. I think it's lovely. And 
notice that he had that moment of mentalism in there. Like he totally got it wrong on purpose when he said it was a lady. Mm -hmm. And so that everyone goes, oh, he failed. And then he recovered. No, oh, it was an even card. It was a spot card. It was an even card. It was the 10. It's, you know, this is one of those tricks that there's just a lot of air in it. And you can do so much with it. Agreed. You take it in so many different directions. And uh, and I think it suits this particular situation. People sitting around a table kind of a thing. Really, really well, you know. Agreed. And I like the way you got into it, too. It was a little different, you know. A little different than I've seen that approach taken before. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely an old school way of going about all that right yeah <laughs> but i mean that's okay that's why we do this you know what i'm saying that's why we watch this stuff yeah exactly just you to know? see you see how it's been done before us and speaking of which this next one is one of these tricks it's like just totally a classic of magic mm -hmm. and it for me at least i don't know about for you but for me it took me like probably like 10 years 15 years before i actually encountered this effect i don't want to say because i don't want to spoil it we should watch the thing and talk about it on the on the other side but you know, I'll be interested to see when you were exposed to this trick, because to me, it was always just a, this elusive thing that could be done, but I never saw anybody do it well. All right. You know? I'm intrigued now. Nice. <laughs> so for this mind readings experiment, I have here a deck of playing cards, which is from the United States. It says aviator, air caution finish, USA. And this deck of playing cards has 52 cards, no joker. I threw the jokers out. It had jokers when it came. This afternoon, before I came down here, I turned one card facing you, and 51 cards show the backs to you. Now, if I will say, you, madame, you, sir, and I will find out what card it is, all of you will say, now, this trick we understand. Paul spoke with the person before the show and said, please, when I say think this card, you think that card. That would be too easy. So therefore, we will make it a little bit at random. Mm -hmm. Madam, we have here a dice. And you can see, Scotty, try if the dice is not loaded. It does not always fall on the same side. <laughs> try again. Five, one. There's two different sides. There's a five. Huh? Well, ah, try so again. There's a five. Five, there's a five. Oh. Well, you're good. Yeah, you should go see <laughs> Five. There's a five. I think you Oops. got it on purpose. Okay. Ah, okay, right. okay, okay, okay. You can get another five. Yeah, so, so we should throw some money down. We make it like this. We call you, madam, number one. You are number two. You are number three. You are number four. You are number five. And you are number six. We don't have more sides on this one, yes? <laughs> <laughs> throw the dice. Wait a moment. Before you throw the dice, you, 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 and you, think one card. Think one Think a card. A card. Pensez à une carte. This was the same thing in French. Think a card. Now, do me the favor, don't think the same card he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Neither should you think the same card. Neither I want Frank to think the same card you're thinking. And now, Frank, you roll the dice. Oh, oh you, you roll it too far. Four. Who is number four? One, two, three, four. You saw the card. I thought of card. Yes. Okay. Do you remember the card you thought? Yes. You do remember. <laughs> Can you tell us all which is the card you thought? Seven of hearts. No, no, no. <laughs> Just a moment. It's the happy accent. You see? <laughs> I only use I my powers for good. I only calm down. And all I have that effect on women. This deck. Are in one direction, except one only card, oh which is facing you, mm -hmm. and is the seven of hearts. I will, I will, with your permission, turn my back to you. I go to turn another card in this deck. And mm. after I've turned another card in the deck, I go to put the deck back in its box. 
And now we go to think again. Madam, throw the dice. Okay. Two. Two. That's me. That's you. That's you. <laughs> Scotty did. Don't oh. say. <laughs> don't get excited. <laughs> you saw the card, but that's already long ago. Mm -hmm. Would you like to change? No. No. <laughs> no. You know. He thought about that. He did. I congratulate you because if I have ever asked Stand in his ground, a man. girl, would you like to change? They changed, <laughs> and six times. <laughs> Can you tell me the card which you thought of? I thought of the eight of diamonds. You thought of the eight? Eight the of eight diamonds. Of diamonds. No, no. Now, this is very strange. <laughs> very strange, I tell you. <laughs> because this deck no is all know. in one direction, except one only card, <gasps> and this one only card is nothing else. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's Great, a, right? It's a bludgeoning. It's a bludgeoning. It's just pure, <laughs> pure mind reading. And he's doing it with a, you know, a simple thing that we all overlook. <laughs> you know, I uh, this is brainwave deck. It's the brainwave. It's and the brainwave. I, I was never, I didn't use the brainwave. I used the opposite, which is the invisible. Visible. The ultimate. You know what I mean? It's right, kind right. of the same thing. Yep. But, uh, you know, it's a fantastic trick. And and people, you know, I, I shouldn't, I don't want to say any, I don't want to make any large assumptions. Okay. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we think that it's, it's not okay to use a gimmick, you know? Uh -huh. That, I remember that, I remember thinking like that in early yeah. stages in magic. And then I think what happens is eventually you get to a point where you realize whatever you know, it takes. Well, yeah, <laughs> but the punch something like this has such a punch um, that you know you're silly. You're you're actually doing your audience a disservice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. If, if you don't, because it's just so powerful. I did invisible deck, you know, for a long time. Totally. Uh, that eventually, I mean, that was like a trick I learned probably in high school, probably. Right. It's like one of usually one of when you get serious about magic, it's usually one yeah. of the first real big guns you get, right? And, yeah, and it's one of the first ones you get that just blows people's minds. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you learn it and you handle it right, it just it's really annihilates people. You can't yeah. beat it. <laughs> yeah, it annihilates them, and uh, and I'm always a fan of that. So someone mentioned something in the chat about uh, about the language, and you know it's it's worth pointing out that you know he he starts saying things in all these different languages. Uh, he was famous for being fluent in all those languages that he sort of teases in the beginning, and he could do the show in any one of those languages, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty cool thing, you know. Yeah. I, 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 that seems like I. For those that don't speak other languages, and really probably those that even speak another language, that, that's probably a magic trick in and of itself, right? I Just can't seeing even the guy imagine. bust out that much. Yeah, I can't even imagine what that must be like or how you do that. Right. I don't, I don't, I, I know bits and pieces of other languages, but I do not fluently speak another language. I had a friend that spoke uh, fluent German, and he was uh, uh, from the United States, and he spoke a lot of Japanese. He was a basketball player traveled overseas and you know mm -hmm. made his living and uh, playing on overseas teams and he said that after living in germany for you know like five six years now he dreams in german oh my god <laughs> like that, that blew my mind i was like what <laughs> what does that even mean <laughs> that's crazy totally that totally so, so i can only crazy. imagine what paul Patassi's life must be or must yeah, have been if right? you if you i mean it's amazing really but if you're looking for a good stand-up trick card trick you know, that you can play parlor and maybe a little bigger. This or the invisible deck is definitely. Agreed. Yeah. It's I, and it's really something. like when you start doing any sort of platform magic or parlor magic, it's like one of the first ones that should be on the list because it's, it's what you said before. You can't beat it effect wise. It's as strong as a card trick gets. It's basically straight on mind reading. And it's, it's super low tech in terms of what you have to do as a performer to make the thing play. So it's like, 
a perfect thing when you need an extra five minutes in your show when you're building a, a platform oh. or parlor show it's like necessary oh i you think know? you should i think you should plan on it yeah, exactly. you know, i think you should plan on using it um and the other thing too and paul does a great job of it here with the uh, double take on it kind of a thing yeah. You know, which I don't think I've ever seen anybody do like a double take on it, like go right back to the well right after, you know, uh, yeah. and it seems to work for him really well. And I think it does because of that whole dice rolling proposition. And and, and the brainwave and... method contributes to that because you're only seeing yeah. backs ever. Right. I think right. if you're a visible deck, you're going to see faces and that might be a thing that gives someone a clue. Mm, maybe. I don't know. I think. Depends I think... on what they pick. Right. And how they come out of the card box. <laughs> well i for you know invisible deck i don't organize to the classic principle i do it a different way mm -hmm. but nonetheless i think that uh most people i don't think there's familiar with playing cards as we are i think a six goes by and an eight goes by and you know i don't think there's really any vibe like we would you or i would know which one went by i think to I, them it's just a card i think if you're going to do level. with an invisible deck you just have to give, give it a quick chop yeah, you know, you can just do a that. quick overhand shuffle so that the so that the faces change on the on the face of the pack so yeah, that there's no that. discrepancy. The, yeah, and yeah. then I think you can do the same exact thing that Paul did, where you could do a do a second. I've seen the face, as it were. <laughs> I've seen a pretty famous magician come to town here and mm -hmm. do an invisible deck. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I don't want to mention who it is. Okay, okay. but uh, you'll tell me later, right? Yeah, he would come every year and we love him, but he does the same act every year, you know, and I've, I'm uh, suffer from the same thing. And so they said, you can come back. You got to do something different. So what does he do? He gets a giant archery target. Okay. <laughs> with playing cards all over it. Okay. <laughs> and then he goes through this whole thing and then he shoots an arrow at it, picks a card and reveals it with his <laughs> Hey, got a lot out of it, man. That's a big, I mean, that's a big production. That's something. <laughs> it was, it was really? awe inspiring. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> you know, it was very, very funny. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, it is. It was really good. I, I look how much I still enjoy it. Yeah. That's a memory. <laughs> I'm sure that, you know, and you're, you're an issue for folks that don't know anything about magic. They see a guy do something like that. Right. That's he shot an arrow from the back of the room and it was the card he predicted. I mean, that's, that's a big effect, man. <laughs> that's it was cool. very smart. He threw the, he threw the thing down, like he laid it down and then, and then he sprayed something on it. I don't know what, then all the cards just like, he threw them all down. Okay. Like in randomness. Okay. So that, you know, and then he put the target up and then he shot it. Oh, like he put him down on the ground and set everything up and then hung that thing up he on the wall. It was a few years ago. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. But so like there's a deck of cards. He put the target down. He sprayed something on it, probably some kind of spray adhesive. And then he laid all the cards out. So it was like all random on there, right? So some are face really up, be... some are face down. And yeah, yeah. it's a big okay. mess. Exactly. Gotcha. And then he and then he did it. Yeah. And it was that's I'm cool. It was still it's and still that cool. seems like you have to have a little bit of archery skill because he's got to hit a face up one, right? Yeah, I mean, that's not in my skill set. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> But, uh, you know, the folks that I know that are archers, they like to, you know, mention that they're archers now and again. And that's a perfect I way to do it do. without mentioning it. <laughs> I think they're proud. I think they're they proud. Are. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of work to hit a target. I understand. I'd want, you know, I'd want to show a picture every now and again if I did that, I think. <laughs> Very funny. All right. Well, let's get into this last clip. This one is, a, again, another one of those classics of magic that, you know, maybe you got to see someone do. The reality is, is you're never going to get to see anyone do it anymore because of the subject matter you'll see, but I'm almost it's still afraid. just such a fooler and just a show, great showpiece, man. Let's, let's get into this next one now. What is it, little experiment as I have here, this small mug. I have as well here, this deck of playing cards, correct? Correct. Normal deck of playing cards. Yes. Yes. You say so. You, you, you suppose so. Yes. And in my inside pocket, a crossword puzzle paper. Yes. 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 It's by the way, German crossword puzzle. How good are you in German crossword puzzle? No good Nein. at all. No. no. Okay. I need for this trick, ladies and gentlemen, a cigarette. Who of you? does have a cigarette. 
course. You, Frank. Frank, Frank, Frank is the man who has everything. <laughs> Give me one stick, please. Thank you very much. Can I ask you, please, to stand up? You, 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 you. <laughs> we put the cigarette here in this glass, and you will be the one who puts that glass over there on the table. Okay. On the table, on the tray? On the table, mm -hmm. not on the tray. Thank you very much. You made a wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> now, we come to this deck of playing cards, which has 52 cards, and I will ask our newcomer, Deborah, you will be so kind and pick out one card. Take one. Huh? Look at it. This is a special trick, because you can also show the card to me. No? Yes. What is it? Oh, Queen of Diamonds, not bad. <laughs> Can you show it, please, to the audience? <laughs> Take it in your hand, please, like this. Yeah? And tear it up in the middle. She really did it. <laughs> you do everything what people say to you? No. <laughs> okay, put the two pieces on top of each other. On top of each other. Yes. And cut in four pieces. Maybe I should disobey you. <laughs> Come on. Put the four pieces on top of each other and cut into 16 pieces. <laughs> You didn't have your Wheaties to this morning. <laughs> no, but I Throw those pieces on here. All of them. All of them. This one is not very well cut. Cut one more time, please. Oh, no. <laughs> Work. Good. Thank you. We go to take out two pieces from here. One. Two. Scotty. Take one of those two pieces, this one. Okay. Hold it, please, like this in your right hand, like so we can see the piece. Oh. Okay. And put your elbow here on the table. Okay. Yes? You are so kind and hold this tray. Yes. And we go to take the crossword puzzle paper. Okay. Out of this one, we go to make, Deborah, a paper cone. You know how is paper cone called? In Spanish, cucurucho. <laughs> she knew it. But I can see we have a multilingual audience here. <laughs> we have this little cucurucho, and we go to throw the pieces in. They were not very equal, some bigger, some smaller, but we go to throw them in. You watch me if I throw the pieces really in here. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Are the pieces in here, Deborah? Yes, they are. Definitely they are? They're in there. They're in there. No, no way! Oh. <laughs> no way! We're they are here? gone! Can I search you? I tell you, when the pieces are gone, I'm nervous. <laughs> and when I'm nervous, I have to smoke. I smoke very seldom, and I will smoke Frank. May I smoke the cigarette you gave me? Yes, you can. You can. I go to take the cigarette. You, madam, put the cigarette in here and on the table. Out of this little mug. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good brand. Good brand. <laughs> There's something wrong. Uh -huh. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. In the cigarette. Oh, Whoa! No. <laughs> there is a card. And this is exactly the Queen no of way. Diamonds. No All the pieces way. are together. Only one little piece is missing. Frank, try to see. Hold it with your own hand. Oh, yeah, oh. And try to see if it fits. Uh, it fits? It fits? Oh. That's the end! Thank you! Thank you! <laughs>
<laughs> as good as it gets, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I lessons to be learned, right? I mean, here we go. He's made everything it's so a clear. It's a there's frame, there's beautiful Obviously. frames around each of those moments so that when you go back in your memory to what happened, it, there's nothing to backtrack. <laughs> I just think sometimes we make stuff too hard for ourselves. Agreed. Just make it too hard. Agreed. You know. And uh, I mean, there's a beautiful trick right there. You can't really do it anymore. But you can't do that trick. But, but you, you can, can do, do it some like other it. way. Yeah, yeah you, you can, can do, do some other like way. Yeah. Seal it up in a pack of gum. That's right. You something that's mean? relevant that people will care about. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's it's a good trick, man. It's a good it trick. Is. But I, there's something about the smoke, you know, because it's fire. It's smoke. It's a it's another object yeah. that people know because it's so commonplace. You know, it's it's great. It's just so good. I remember mm-hmm. the first time I saw that in person, I did what those people were doing. I went, what? No. Felt think, like my guts were spilling out on the table. What? How? I I, there's something like that in one of the Scarney books, I think. Okay. I think that's where I saw it the first time. I saw Gary Kurtz do it in person the first time I saw it done. And he did it with a signed bill. Mm-hmm. And it was outstanding just outstanding right. like when you see an effect like that that just that it, it does what the bill and the lemon does to people it does you yeah, know yeah it's the object to an impossible place impossible i location. love the vanish it's great i love the vanish it's great that is just an awesome little utility vanish right there totally. for something like that yep you know Keep that one in your back pocket because it'll come up again right <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's a neat little thing there you know yeah very simple very straightforward doesn't seem to be too out of place and an effect like that i love the impossible location thing because an effect like that it has like uh it has like an ethereal quality i know it's not mentalism but it feels like it's mentalism because it feels like it's real right i think that's what this mentalism sort of distinct from regular magic effects is that it seems like somewhere somehow it's in the realm of possibility that maybe just maybe that really just happened. Right. And Mm -hmm. then you were able to control and make that happen every single time you're in front of an audience. This has like that sort of feeling to it. You know what I mean? I just love it, man. I love it. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's so strong. I I was thinking about what you were saying about how, um, you know, mentalism seems like it could be real. Yeah. You know, and really what it is, is it's the same thing, just coming at it from a different direction. That trick right there, though, seems like magic, right? Because it's the reappearance of the uh, torn up, vanished pieces. I I can't, I'm not forming good words right now. (laughs) I don't know why. I don't know why. But you know what I'm saying? It's like that, that this was a magic. Uh, but the invisible deck presentation was like super mentalism but i think it just goes to show you that you can mix these things you know it's it's more about your personality and your presentation as the thread than it is really anything else yeah yeah no doubt no doubt you know so we had a couple of comments here uh john gosman says that he uses the the brainwave as an out when he screws up or they forget the card, you know, he's, he's using it as an out rather than as a main showpiece. And, you know, for, I, I love, I love that I mean, point of view. That was the way I use it in the beginning. I mean, a lot of people do that. Yeah. 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 It's a great thing. It's really cool. All right. Is well, is there another question? There was, well, I, I'm not sure what it, what he was referring to, but Neil yeah. mentioned Darren Brown does it. It's, it's in his first book. Oh, he's, he's probably talking about the cigarette trick. Darren Brown in his first book, mm-hmm. he has that, it's the um, it's the Mullica trick where the cigarette is the card, <laughs> right? Oh, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And you're 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 yeah. It's it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Darren has a really nice presentation on it. It's tougher to get because that book is a little bit obscure at this point. It's there was only so many of them printed, but that that first Darren Brown book is like it's pretty wonderful. It's Darren Brown's transition from really being like a regular mainstream mentalist guy into becoming what he's become you know where he was sort of leaving behind what we would all know is like the the commonplace you know the stuff that's in the literature so to speak and Mm -hmm. he started really inventing his own ideas that were not like anything else that anyone else was doing and you know he's creating that tv magic and the theater magic it was just a different a different thing than anyone else was doing but uh but interesting material nonetheless all those any of the books that you can get of darren brown all of it's very very interesting stuff it'll open your mind in a way you don't expect it's really cool Definitely awesome. Worth checking out. 
Okay, well, it's probably time for us to go to that after show so we can uh, sure. talk about some of these things a little bit more. So uh, All right. thanks everyone for joining us today. Do us a favor and click follow or subscribe. Make sure you'll get notified every time we go live, which it's going to be in a couple of days. So we're going to see you all soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everyone.